After I posted my video about the 2025 Parsec Performance 12 volt tools, things got, well, interesting. In that video, my randomly chosen impact wrench couldn't undo a 200 Nm lug bolt, and suddenly, a wave of unhappy Parkside fans came crashing in. Dislikes, people unsubscribing from the channel, angry comments, and I even got warnings from Facebook groups. The whole deal. I guess the opening to that video makes sense now. But in between all the noise, a few people left reasonable feedback. They suggested I test more impact wrenches and open them up to have a look inside. So here we are. I bought two more and I really hope you'll drop a like and a comment because honestly, this channel is starting to make me broke. Now, one of the impact wrenches I'm testing today is the exact same one from the previous video. But I figured it's best to include it again for consistency. The other two are brand new, still sealed until now. So you know they haven't been touched, but look, if you don't want to believe me, nothing I say or show will convince you. So for those people, yes, Parkside is the ultimate, absolute, unbelievable best brand in the world for everything ever, forever. But for the rest of you, I hope this video is useful and don't worry, I'll also be doing a teardown a bit later on. But first, let's get through a bit more testing. And finally, just to make things clear, in all my videos, I try to be as honest as I possibly can. I've never claimed to be a tool expert or an electronics expert. I'm just sharing my experiences. What you do with that information is entirely up to you. I do my best to show things as fairly as I can. But at the end of the day, we all have our own biases. No matter how self-aware we try to be, we can never fully get rid of them. And I'm no different. That's why I don't just give you my opinion, I also try to show you the actual tests behind it. And yes, that even goes for sponsored content. Believe it or not, I still try my best to keep things honest. Whether you believe me or not, well, that's entirely your choice. All right then, with that out of the way, let's lay down some ground rules for the testing. I'll be using my single working B2 5 amp Parkside Performance battery from OM for all the tools. Every tool will go through the exact same test in the same order so things stay fair and consistent. Each one will also be set to its highest mode, which is mode 4. And according to the box, that should mean a maximum breakaway torque of 350 newton meters. So, let's find out how they really perform. If you're not interested in watching me run through these tests again, that's totally fine. You can skip ahead to the teardown section. But I promise, the testing is important to really understand what's going on here. So, first up, I've got the three tools lined up to remove three lug bolts each all tightened to 120 newton meters, which is not a huge challenge, but let's start off easy, shall we? All right, first up is tool one, which is the same impact range from the previous video. Last time it failed at 200 newton meters, but a lot of you wanted to know what kind of power it actually had. So let's put it to the test at 120 newton meters and see how it compares to the others. And just so you know, I'll keep updating the results at the bottom of the screen as we go along. So with the lug bolts re to 120 newton meters, let's see what tool 2 can do. And this one is also a fresh unit from April 2025, straight from the newest batch. That was actually unbelievably good. All right, back to 120 newton meters and on to tool 3. And just like the first two, this is also an April 2025 model. So what do you think? Will we see any real performance difference here? Alright, let's raise the numbers now. This time we're going after 150 newton meters. I fully accept that I can't be absolutely precise when setting these torque values, but at around 150 newton meters, my margin of error should be no more than about 10 to 15 newton meters. And it's at this point that I started noticing something interesting. And you can watch for it too as the test goes on. The impact wrenches began to feel very different from one another in my hands. One felt fine, but another was vibrating excessively and jumping all around the place. Now of course, that's what impact wrenches do. They shake, they kick, that's normal. But what I didn't expect was for brand new tools from the same batch to behave so differently. It's like buying three identical Toyota Corollas and each one drives in its own unique way. That sort of thing shouldn't really happen.
150 newton meters was pretty much the last ideal case scenario for these. But now, let's step it up to 200 newton meters and see what happens. Maybe I misled you last time. That's why I'm using a different wheel this time to see if Tour 1 will fail again at 200 newton meters. So, uh, was that surprising to anyone? Mode 4, full 5 amp battery, and that's all it could manage. Still, stay with me here. Even though I pretty much expected it wouldn't move the lug bolt, this part is important for what we'll see later on in the teardown. Now, watch closely because this is where the performance differences between the tools really start to show. Also, pay attention to how they jump around. You might not fully catch it on camera, but one of them was actually tough to keep steady on the lug bolt. Alright, now this is the final part of my test. You've seen how the three 2025 tools handled it. Now let's see how my 2024 tool performs with the older performance battery. Watch closely and let me know what you think down in the comments. It's important to point out that I'm comparing three tools from the 2025 batch against a single unit from the 24 batch. And that could mean a couple of things. One possibility is that I just happen to pick three tools from the 25 batch that are slightly down on power compared to the rest. That's entirely possible. And I've seen comments under my last video from people saying that 25 tools work just as well as my 24 one. And honestly, I don't doubt these comments for a second. I fully believe them. On the other hand, it could also be that I just ended up with one of the few really good 2024 impact wrenches. There are a couple of possibilities here, but the one thing that seems clear, and I think most of us can agree on, is that it points to a quality control issue. Now, before we dive into the impact wrench teardown, let's also take a look inside the 2024 and 2025 12 volt impact drivers, because in terms of performance, they are also worlds apart. So here they are. And just like in the previous video, I'll keep things consistent. The newer model is on the right and the older model goes on the left. So now let's have a look inside. So the first question to get an answer is going to be the one about the motors. And yes, they are absolutely identical. Both the 2024 and 2025 models use the exact same rotors and stators. I even measure them and the results were identical. So, nothing interesting to report here. Now, let's move on and see what the front casings are hiding. Weigh scale at the ready and I really must apologize for the wrap on the scale, but I received a formal warning not to use it for, well, weighing tool parts. Anyway, first up is the hammer assembly from the older tool which comes in at 188 grams. Now, let's take a closer look at the newer one. And right away, here's the answer as to why the newer one has less power. Just look at that small hammer. Honestly, I'm surprised it performed as well as it did. At 163 grams, it's about 25 grams lighter than the older one. And yes, that's a big difference. In fact, it's roughly a 13% decrease in mass. Here they are side by side, and there's something else I didn't even notice at first. The mechanism on the older tool has two planetary gears, whereas the newer one has three. 
that should make it more stable and reliable in the long run. And that's not all, there's even more good news. The heatsink on the newer tool is larger than on the older one. Put all that together, and I have to admit, I'm starting to rethink my position. Sure, the newer ones are down on power, but if you're okay with a bit of lost power, then at least on paper they should last longer and have fewer issues, both mechanically and electronically. That said, I really hope the quality control improves. Now it's time for the teardown you've all been waiting for, the impact ranges. But before we get into it, just a quick reminder to like, comment and subscribe because, well, that's what keeps this channel going. Alright, let's get started. For this teardown, I'm opening up the 2024 model along with the best and worst performers from the 2025 batch. So that's my 24 model, and now for the best performer from the 25 batch. At first glance, there are absolutely no differences. Even at a closer look, a digital caliper in hand, and everything seemed identical. You asked about the status, well, yeah, they are identical on both the 2024 and 2025 models. Same with the Rotus. Not only do they look the same, but they're also completely interchangeable. Control boards, also identical. Interchangeable too. Maybe someone could dig deep into the microchips and find a difference, but I doubt that's the issue. For all intents and purposes, the boards are the same. At this point I thought, okay, this is my last chance not to look silly. Please let there be something, something awful hiding under the casing so I don't get roasted in the comments again. But no, nothing. I even measured the anvil diameter, but it's all the same. So I opened up the worst performer as well, hoping for answers. And honestly, I really started to worry. They were all identical. Every spring, every part, they were identical. The weight was within three grams. That's just the weight of the grease, nothing much. The only real difference is, was, well, the color of the grease. That's bad because we all saw the massive performance gaps during testing. What's going on here? Was I imagining things? Were you also imagining things? Was it all in my head? I could almost hear Fabrizio laughing at me. It was all in vain. Time to delete the channel and go cry in a corner. But then, wait, wait! Hiding beneath a washer, I finally saw it. On my 2024 impact wrench, the anvil and hammer fit together almost perfectly. On the newer models though, the fit just wasn't right. That's the difference. The machining or maybe the manufacturing process itself had changed. And because of that, the hammers and anvils on the newer models don't mate as precisely as they should. And that's why one of the tools in the test started off strong and then dropped off. Because the imperfect fit causes insufficient power transfer and it increased over time as well. On my 2024 model, the hammer strikes the anvil cleanly every time delivering consistent power. On the newer ones, the edges just don't meet evenly. One side hits before the other, and it's a single hammer in that case, not a clean dual strike. How much power is lost depends on the defect, and I think it can get worse over time as the wear builds up. That's exactly why the worst fitting assembly gave you the worst performance, and why one of the tools started to decrease in performance as well. So no, little and park side aren't lying. Some of these impact wrenches can hit the claimed 350 newton meters breakaway torque, but others, like the ones I tested, never could and never will. It's not about false advertising, it's about poor quality control, and choosing the wrong manufacturer probably. If all the 2025 impact wrenches had hammers and anvils fitted like the one in my 2024 model, they'd all be hitting 350 newton meters without a problem. And finally, let me leave you with this. If I were really a Parkside hater, would I have made this video and put it on my homepage. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video as interesting to watch as it was for me to make. 